Today it's going to be all about a a real freaking treat. Meet the Cube or ASCII, a a ultra ultra SFF case coming in at only 5.15 meters. 5.15. To put this into perspective, if we would take the newest 2022 Toyota Prius and we would fill its trunk with ASCII cases, we could fit in a total of 88 in there and we would still have 3.8 liters left. The perfect amount for two six beds. Just, just imagine the cost. All of these costs. But do you know what's even more freaking amazing? Wood. Freaking wood everywhere. <laughs> So this is the Cube or ASCII, not to be confused with ASCII, the character encoding you are going to use to bitch around in my comment section about how bad it is to game on an iGPU. But just hold on for a second here, we've come pretty far now, and that 5600G that I've put in here is actually pretty competent. Coming back to Cube or, they are a Finland based company who's gained my complete attention because of an MATX case that I can only describe as yeah, straight up not safe for work porn. Yeah, that, that's no way of putting it differently. This is amazing and I still got hopes that one day I will open these wooden doors myself. Uh, then there is another product. If I think about Finland, I'm thinking about being somewhere deep in a, in a snowy nature inside some wooden cabin with nothing but ice cold weather and two or three polar bears lurking around the corner to eat me. And instead of burning down half of Finland to get the room temperature from your wife's feet to something more, you know, survivable, you know what you need? A mining case that doubles as a room radiator. Ignoring what we all believe about, about mining, this is genius. Anyway, let's get back to the actual topic of the day, the ASCII SFF case. This tiny, and I mean freaking tiny, small form factor case can best be described as a bookshelf PC with its cute 5.15 liters volume. As mentioned before, we got heard. And to make things better, we can even decide which one. Before buying an ASCII, we get to decide between Sherry, Birch or Cognac. The one that we have right here is the latter Cognac option. Out of the box, the case itself comes completely pre-assembled. After unboxing it, all we can do is pop off the side panel and have a look at all of this insane 5.15 liters real estate ready to be used with, yeah, barely anything. Standing like this, the case is 79 millimeters wide, 200 millimeters deep and 326 millimeters high. Before we go over the compatibility part, the case can be used in both a vertical or a horizontal orientation. If you want to lay it flat on the table, however, I highly recommend to do as cube or says and use these included rubber feet on the side, otherwise you will just scratch the hell out of your beautiful wood. That sounded wrong. To make it uh, stand up straight without scratching that aluminum plate that goes around the case, Cuba includes something really really cool. This. I don't even know how to call it, I'm, I know that there is a name like as, as a kid you get toys that are piece together like this, but it's essentially a wooden sheet with pre-cut pieces that are ready to break out that you can use to build your own freaking stand. The whole process takes about a minute and in the end you are left with a beautiful stand in the same color of your case and, and that is that's such a freaking cool idea. And by the way, yes, this is one beautiful wooden start button. <sighs> Now let's finally get to the compatibility part. To make it very clear, we are in ultra SFF territory here. So SFX and SFX Air Power Supplies and only Mini ITX motherboard. However, in contrast to cases like for example the Laser 3D ZX8, the ASCII case is going all in of its size, which in the end means no GPU. Now this is kind of a convoluted topic, of course. We all know having a GPU will always mean more performance. That's just straight up fact. However, not everybody is going to need a GPU. Truth is, those iGPUs inside of a 5600G, a 5700G did make an insane performance jump compared to what we used to have. And if you are into very light gaming or more work stuff, you know, Excel, Word, browsing, Facebook, you know, the old stuff. It's perfectly fine to know, ditch the GPU. We even have an upcoming video where we will go a bit deeper into this topic, like do you really need a GPU, considering today's market? But we are going off topic here. A 5600G is actually pretty fine for a huge number of use cases out there. But this is a review about uh, the case, not uh, the possible performance benefit achievable with 600G, so Let's get back to the case. The thing to keep in mind here, 
The ASCII is an ultra SFF case which is not meant to be used for heavy gaming and it is required to take a CPU with integrated graphics, so 5600G, 5700G or any mainstream Intel chip. And there is no spot for any 2.5 or 3.5 inch hard drive, so all you can go with are M.2 SSDs. The last and probably most important point on the spec sheet is the CPU cooler height. As you might have seen during the B-rolls, there is no case fan and the available space for a CPU cooler is really limited to begin with. And this basically translates into um, get the absolute best cooler you can. Funnily enough, because of the limitation of 57mm high coolers, the available options are not going to be very expensive anyway. But I believe that it's really important to explain some things here. Everywhere on the Cube or website, they advertise the ASCII by using a Cryorix C7 copper cooler. I have two issues with this. First of all, the C7 copper or any C7 cooler for that fact is basically impossible to get here into Central Europe. Somehow I did manage to get one, but I had to order it into some random freaking paper shop in somewhere in deep Germany and then drive there. It, it was nuts. The second issue I already had before doing the review wasn't actually with Cube or but with uh, Sight. As far as I can tell right now, based on the benchmarks I've done using an Ultra SFF cooler, the Scythe Shuriken 2 is the best sub 60mm cooler out there as of now based on, on the ones I have. But the important point is that it is outperforming a C7 copper by like a lot. You might think that this is kind of a dumb comparison because Sh a Shuriken 2 is 58mm high while the ASCII has a 57mm limit, but uh, in actuality, once you remove these rubber pads from the Shuriken, you are indeed down to 57mm and that fits in just perfectly. And I believe that Cubo should absolutely mention this in, in some sort on the website, let's say like a compatibility list specifically made for the ASCII where they include the shuriken and they just say like asterisk, remove the rubber and you will be fine. In the end, most people will not even think about a shuriken, but the performance gain is quite huge and they should be made aware of that just because they need to know what options they have and they are also quite more affordable than a Cryorix C7 copper, not even speaking about the availability here. That being said, I also wanted to mention something quite uh, rare. Sometimes there are structures that make sound be perceived differently. I guess that it has something to do with how the sound hits the structure. Probably in some cases it's being like cut or whatever and it will produce a weird sound. That's something that, that can happen with uh, PC cases where the fan sits flush against uh, some sort of, of filter. It does the same thing in here. If you're using a cooler that is squished against that side panel, be prepared to add another 2 or 3 dBs to that sound and, and it is off it is annoying. However, if you lift that side panel, the sound becomes totally normal again. The annoying part of this is that it only happens to the Scythe sh Shuriken in here. Something like a Cryorook C7, a, a Nokia NHU9A or I, or a bunch of other coolers that I've tried are low enough so that the horrible sound enhancement is not created. It really sucks and the rule that I found during the review is if you want the quietest thing, do not go for a Shuriken and if you don't mind the extra noise and you want to go, you know, full, full performance, go Shuriken. Okay, with the whole compatibility part covered, let's take a closer look at the thermal. The case is completely covered in, in nice looking cutouts on every single side as well as on the top side. Ignoring the design aspect of this for a second, this is basically as close to, to free air as you will get. Something quite cool about these cutouts is that you are also able to rotate the power supply and let it use the breathing holes on the on the back side and that's, that's really up to you you can choose how you want it now we did some thermal benchmarking beforehand and we found that while hammering the 5600g with cpu z stress test and form work on 1080p the temperature went up to 77 degrees c outside of the case once we put it into the case the thermals went up a bit to 84 degrees c that's a 7 degrees c difference and i do believe that it's quite big upon investigating random possibilities the best explanation we found was that the heat was just building up underneath and above the CPU cooler and that it wasn't going anywhere due to the lack of any like case fans. And in the end that was just slowly cooking everything inside a bit harder and harder. 
Then we just opened the side panel, which got the temperature down to 79 degrees C, so only 2 degrees C difference to a 100% free air. This does not prove my, my theory at all, instead it just opens up the possibility that the side panel doesn't let enough air through. However, just look at the size of these holes, I mean, no way are these creating any issue. So as my last attempt to, to pull that heat out, I had a, a last idea. As it turns out, there is enough space above the motherboard to attach two or maybe even three 60mm wide and, and high fans that are 50mm thick. Of course, there are numerous options to do this now, um, I just don't have any. The closest thing I had was uh, Noctua NFA 4X20s, so a 40mm high and wide fan that is 20mm thick. After just squishing two of them up there, we got the temps down to 82 degrees C. Now to make one thing very very clear here, those NFA 4X20s are not pushing a lot of air, 5 CFM to be exact. A random 60mm fan I found online easily doubles or triples that amount. But nevertheless, this kind of proves that there is a bit of hot air stacking up which could or, or should be for a, a best case scenario be taken out. On a quick side note, I also replaced that shuriken with a Cryorix C7 copper as it came in during the review and it is the same cooler that Cubor uses for the, the b-rolls and the presentation and all and it got 87 degrees C on an open case and 90 when it's closed. So uh, just so you know, the shuriken is, is a lot better. And this also segues into the possible improvement section. I think it would be amazing if there were two tiny rails in the top squished against that hot air outlet, which would allow to install two or maybe even three of those tiny fans. This would surely greatly improve the temperature without making it necessary for anybody who doesn't want to get those very weird sized fans. The next possible improvement comes with how the motherboard is installed. Pre-attached, we get these standoffs which are not quite standard. Due to this, Cupo also includes includes an extra set of screws which have to be used. My issue with this is, why are these standards so long? Just looking at them, it's kind of clear that you could make them shorter by like a millimeter or maybe two. This would then lower the motherboard a tiny bit, making a Shuriken 2 compatible by default and, and that's important, eliminate that Shuriken sound in hand. And even if the fan support in, in the top right might be a bit uh, out of the box, shortening these standoffs would be an easy and, and great improvement for the whole case. A weird one I have is let's just ditch that start button LED. Although uh, I absolutely love how the start button turned out, and I, I really do, there seems to be a blue light in there. And the cable is there, and the light is seeable from the inside if you look for a perfect angle, which I was absolutely not able to do with the camera, I'm sorry. I, I tried it for 10 minutes, no way that, that you will see that light, but there is a blue light. Looking from the front, however, there's nothing even remotely translucent. So why the hell? is it there? The cable is just annoying. And as a last point, I think it was a mistake not to add the second central uh, side panel holder. I'm unsure if the case came in this state or if it started to flex over time, but my side panel does not sit as flush as the other side of the case. Uh, sure, it's just a tiny millimeter, but when a case is that small and you and it's wood and you start to look very very closely, you can, you can kind of see it and that's easily solvable if you add another one like, like here. Now let's get to the uh, eye candy part, I believe. This thing is so freaking beautiful. I love how these cutouts look. I, I love how it allows me to, to sneak peek to my Trident Z RAM and how the front perfectly combines with the matte black metal with Oh, that's, that's, that, that's the type of stuff that, that keeps me going here. Of course, design will always be like up to the buyer. However, also quality-wise, the ASCII can score so many points. The side panels are, are clicked in using a very good working system. Sure, there could be like one notch more, but still ignoring that. It's very well built and even with the, the real wood that has been used, that one was processed uh, very good, making it not only look quite good but you know also not like glinters inducing and then that kind of stuff the, the process of creating this is but even if this thing is freaking beautiful, which it really is, it is not going to be for everybody. Although the iGPU market has made some great advances, um, this is still a case meant for, for light users. Sure, you can game on this thing, assuming your iGPU allows it, and if you take something like, let's say, a 12700K, you can even make this a really good editing rig. However, if you're planning to, to do some hardcore gaming or like you want to edit something that goes beyond 1080p and very very low settings, you might want to look to uh, 
for a case that actually has GPU support. On the bright side, the price is very, and I mean very affordable. At about 110 euros, this is a, a real treat, considering the individuality that a small brand like Cube or brings to the table, and don't forget the, the word, the word. So yeah, as far as price goes, great. So where does this leave us? In my opinion, absolute recommendation for people looking for an extremely small form factor case and who are looking for light gaming, work, or something like a, a media PC with an external NAS because there is no, uh, you know, drive space in there. As long as you fall under one of those categories, damn is this beautiful. But okay, this should be all for the Cube or ASCII Ultra SFF Mini ITX case. At this point, a huge thank you to Cube for providing us this amazingly looking case. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Laser 3D ZX8 case. This one also got some real wood, but due to the bigger size, it also comes with GPU support. On a side note, we also got a Discord server now. So if you want to join and explain the peaks of having hardwood inside your PC, the link is in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.